office of William Attar. Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Johnson Automotive Group. We welcome you to week three. Tonight from Honeyoy Falls Lima High School, as this is the rivalry game here in Class B, the Cougars hosting the Batavia Blue Devils. Along with Mike Danger, my name is Gene Battaglia. This is always a great matchup, and we're so excited to be back here tonight at HFL. It's a rare occasion, though, because it's a matchup that has a lot of history, but never has, has this matchup happened where you have an 0-2 HFL Cougars team going up against a 2-0 Batavia Blue Devils team. We do have two good quarterbacks tonight here. First for the visiting Blue Devils, as it'll be the junior, and he's done a great job here so far. Bronx Bucholtz, he's going to be a threat on the ground as well. Yeah, he's really delivered up to this point. He continues to take what the defense gives him week in and week out. Told us earlier in the week that he patterns his game after Josh Allen, even after Monday night's performance for the Bills. We'll be watching him tonight. Don't be deceived by the 0-2 record for HFL. They played Waverly. That's a powerhouse downstate. Monroe was certainly very good. Matthew Meacham, the quarterback, he's back. He's ready for tonight. And Coach Russ told us that Meacham is one of the best quarterbacks this, por this program has ever had. Some real high praise for a kid who's been anticipating this game, who's been around the program long enough to know just how important it is to beat Batavia. As we take a look at tonight's Eyed Family of Dealerships, keys to the game. And for Batavia, well, like any team, but tonight in particular, they want to set the tone up front. Absolutely. The offensive line needs to set the attitude for this game. Alex Feltz, head coach of Batavia, told us that he wants to clean up any mistakes made in their first two games. Fundamentals, at work, body positioning, and knowing their assignments. And for HFL, it's really, hey, have a consistent offense. Don't get off the field. Get those first downs. And, and our defense, don't allow the big run there to the quarter. Yeah, look, the Cougars should be good throwing the ball tonight, but they know that they need to establish the run, move those chains, and keep that Blue Devils offense off the field. We are excited to bring this to you tonight. It's the law office of William Attar's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Johnson Automotive Group. We'll have the kickoff coming your way next year on CW Rochester. We welcome you back to Honeyway Falls, Lima. Take a look at tonight's head coaches. And not new to the Batavia program, but certainly new to this position is Alex Veltz. Yeah, Alex is uh, an interesting character, and he knows that uh, HFL has a ton of talent. Despite their 0-2 record here, he's not going to take them lightly. He's just a football guy. I mean, he was telling us a story about how a couple of years ago before a sectional game, he had to go work, work out before the game, get in a good sweat and calm the nerves before taking on a rival. Got a well-coached team here on the sideline for Batavia. So in his third game, Alex Vels, John Ross now in year number 11. And he knew this season was going to start off a little slow. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Yeah, absolutely. They're young at key positions. Two linebackers are new, new wide receivers. They're looking to continue to gain experience week in and week out. And as far as the emotion of tonight's game against a rival, they know that tonight uh, both teams are going to be fired up and have a lot of emotion. It's just another game on the schedule. And, and that rival across the sideline has the same emotion that his team has. Grazio Plain is pinned back and he's trying to break some tackles but he's not able to get it back to the 20. So Batavia will start off deep in their own territory as we take a look at tonight's law office of Willie Matar's starting lineups for both teams and Brock Buchholz for quarterback uh, in, in this class here, Class B. He can do it through the air. He can do it on the ground. And he's going to have a lot of help around him tonight, too. Yeah, including his brother, Maggio. Bronx, Maggio. I don't know, maybe, maybe a Yankee fan somewhere in that family. Well, I asked Bronx, did you make it to a game this year? He said no, but they did make it down to Cleveland last year to see the pinstripes. As he'll have one man in the backfield. Bronx Bucholz handing it off, and that cut going right up the middle. That's a big gain and more. 45, 50, off to the races. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, bank it. How about that? Makai Fortes taking that 81 yards. That play good for a touchdown, courtesy of American Custom Exteriors and Interiors, the home improvement company that cares. Good blocking downfield. Want to highlight Carter Mullen, number one for the Blue Devils, uh, the wide receiver on the outside who held his block long enough to spring Fortes for the long touchdown run on the first play offensively from scrimmage for the uh, Blue Devils. Great start for Batavia. Talking with Alex Veltz this week, he said he wanted his team to set the tone up front, and that is a big, big tone setter. 
Wilhelm for the extra point attempt. And how about that? We are a mere 22 seconds into this game, and it's now 7-0. All right, so if you're HFL now, take a breath. <laughs> you have the opportunity to do the exact same thing that your opponent just did. Well, it, you don't have to look back far in history. I mean, last year was Batavia getting up 21 nothing, and oh, we got this one in the bag. No, you don't. All of a sudden, HFL roared back. Now it was Batavia in the end coming out on top, but... I'm wondering if those lessons from last year will be carried over to this year. And there's some experience on this uh, HFL roster, including Matt Meacham, their quarterback, the senior quarterback at 6'3", 175. He's been a part of this program for a long time, and he remembers that game last year. He remembers a lot of important games against Batavia and how important this rivalry actually is for HFL. Now for HFL, they lost in the semis last year to Monroe, uh, that score being very close, but then it was Batavia knocking out Monroe. 14-8 to eight ended up being that final in the championship game. Taking a look at Emmanuel Richardson. He's going to be one of the players on special teams here, number seven. Lots of pink in the crowd tonight. Breast Cancer Awareness Night tonight at HFL. Great cause here. It's always a great uh, vibe when you come down to HFL. As here will be a long end-over-end kick. Just inside the 15, and then putting his knee down was Connor Finn. That kickoff brought to you by Bill Gray's. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Some Bill Gray's. And that is the rule. What if you have a knee down while you're catching it, and for HFL, no return. Matthew Meacham, one of the veterans here in Class B, and he can do it through the air, certainly. Absolutely. Three touchdowns on the season. Now, 0-2 start here for the uh, Cougars. Uh, a couple of tough opponents to start the season with Waverly in Week 1, and they fell to Monroe 54-6 in Week 2. As Ben Cook will be in the backfield, this will be first and 10, looking near side, and that will be a flag coming down in the backfield. Andrew Wanzenried getting the pass, but we'll check what the penalty is all about. I got a penalty. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. This way. Yeah. Looks like they got Bronx uh, Bucholz there for uh, roughing on Meacham. He came in with the full head of steam. There was nobody that was going to get in his way. And he's kind of carried himself through the quarterback there after he let go of the pass. That is one of those. In, in talking to these players this week, how do you keep measured here? And, nope. yeah, that ball is gone there, clearly. Yep, sorry about that. No, that wasn't uh, Buchholz. That was uh, Siverling. Another team captain, Sheldon Siverling, is the nose tackle. So, a little bit of yardage here. First and 10 up to the 29. We'll get to the starting lineups here in just a little bit as Meacham does not have time. Meacham is going to go down, widely throwing it away. Are they going to call that an incompletion, or is he in the grass? They're going to let him have the incompletion, but Mike Danger, my advice, don't do that. And we take a look here at the starting lineups. Again, presented by the law office of William Matar. And then left tackle Aaron Fasick doing a great job there along with the rest of that offensive line. Defense for Batavia Silverling, we just called him out. Bronx Bucholtz, one of the four linebackers. They play the 3-4 defense. This will be second down and 10 as Meacham play action gonna throw it far side and was that caught and then dropped i think they're gonna rule him down by contact, contact. on the first okay, side so yep. the ball came out and, and i think we also have an injured uh, cougar on the field as well it's like number three that would be uh, michael meisen all and uh, michael he's a junior at 5 10 150 Plays both sides, and there's head coach John Ross going over. So, indeed, that does go for a reception, a loss on the play. He was down before that ball came out. This will bring up third down long. While well, while we're they're tending to Meisenthal, we said uh, we say good evening to Kevin Roche. Good evening, Kevin. 
Hey, good evening, guys. As you mentioned earlier, for the first time in over a decade, the Batavia Blue Devils have a new head football coach. Alex Veltz replaced Brennan Briggs, who stepped down following last season. Now, Briggs was responsible for resurrecting this Batavia football program. In 11 seasons, he won six sectional championships and led the Blue Devils to two state semifinals. Now, Alex Velt was on Briggs' staff the last two seasons, and he shared with us this week that he feels the pressure. He feels the weight of maintaining what Coach Briggs built in Batavia. He says he owes it to the student athletes, the community, and guys, his mentor too. Kevin, it's a great story when you can have an assistant kind of take over the program. The good thing here is it's not like Coach Briggs went far, far away. He's still working in the athletic department, but family responsibilities, all the responsibilities, and any coach knows that uh, <laughs> this takes over your life here, <laughs> not just for the month of September. Uh, so certainly uh, good to see Alex Veltz taking the program. We will take a quick break uh, tonight here from Honeyoy Falls, Lima. It's the law office of William Attar's Friday Night Rivals on CW Rochester. in long and this has not been a good start here for HFL tonight allowing a touchdown 81 yards on the first play to Batavia now staring down a third and 13 as Meacham will have four receivers at his disposal and there's a free five yards as on the far side the player jumping I believe it was Timothy ben Murrell ball, false start on the offense oh hey. five yard penalty repeat second down I beg your pardon it's something off a timeout you never want to see, too. Yeah, um, less than optimal start here for HFL. You have an injury that you just had to deal with. Of course, you gave up the big play on defense, the first play of, of the game. Let's see if they get some momentum here, a little positive yards. I don't think you're going to get a third and long at this distance. Let's just try and get something positive out of this play. Andrew Wazenreed will be the receiver to the near boundary. He's wearing number 11 on third and long. Here's the bubble screen to Wazenreed who gets buried in. How do you like that? Both sides of the field for Makai Fortes making that open field tackle. Came in clean. I mean, there, there was really nobody there putting a, a, a body on him. And an easy play defensively. Great tackle in the backfield. HFL lining up for the punt. As deep back will be uh, one of the returning starters, Cole Grazioplin will return this as Meacham stays in to punt on fourth down and 19. Plenty of time to get this away. Nice high punt that will take an HFL bounce. And that'll flip the field position just a little bit as that'll be downed. At the 34-yard line with seven, make that 9.36 remaining here in the first. And for the second time tonight, Batavia going back to work on offense. We do have a flag, however. We got a hold, PSK, on the return after... Gonna be 10 yard penalty, first down, Batavia. That's David Cohen, he is tonight's referee. Our umpire, Billy Bowe, linesman Rob Austin, line judge is Tom Brown, and Brian Labigan is your back judge. We certainly appreciate all the work the officials do here in Section 5, not just in football, but all sports. Hidden yards in a game there, danger like that was an opportunity maybe to start in plus territory, but. You get a good punt, and then you get a penalty. Now Batavia's starting this drive at their own 24. Bronx Bucholtz, the quarterback who handed it off last time, and he's going to keep it himself, trying to work his way to the right. And that's just some good gap responsibility. Not much there. Maybe one on the play as we take a look at tonight's law office of William Matar's starting lineup. Hurt in the car? Call William Matar 
As for Batavia, it is Bukholz, and they were, will work in different running backs as Makai Fortes with that 81-yard touchdown run before. We'll see Maggio Bukholz tonight as well. Sheldon Silverling leading that offensive line at the left tackle position. This is going to be second down and eight. They give him two on that last play. Fortes is your running back on second and long. And he's going to get the call again, gets to the second level, and more. And he gets tripped up all the way out to the 45-yard line. That played good for a kangaroo first down. Lakeside Roofing and Contracting, the home of kangaroo. We hop to it. Fortez is imposing as well early on in this game. Our defense here is, is a standard 4-3 that HFL will run. Ben Cook, we'll talk about more in the broadcast tonight, the leader of that defense. He's also a captain on the lacrosse team. First and 10 at the 45. Batavia on the move once again as Fortes stays in at running back. Bukholz handing off to Fortes, breaks the arm tackle, and maybe gets ahead for one. That was Austin Kriego had the first shot um, in the backfield, but that slowed him up just enough, only a gain of one in the play. You know, maybe just that is enough to remind HFL they can stop this guy. It's going to take some work, and he's ahead of steam coming downhill, but he's had his way so far in this first quarter. Second down, and we'll call it nine. Bukholz takes the snap. Play action throws right side, parallel to the line of scrimmage, and then moving ahead. And that will get right back to midfield. That's Cole Grazio playing the wide receiver screen to bring up third down. Nice job by Boo Coles, kind of hanging in there and putting it where only his, uh, his guy can get it. And for Grazio playing, nice job hauling that in as it was a little bit high. Kind of tipped it to himself to get some positive yardage on that play. The strong safety, Connor Finn, reading that play correctly, coming up to make the tackle to bring up third down and five. Opportunity for HFL to get off the field. Number zero. There's another change of football levels. Didn't used to see that ever. Third down and five. Bukholz screened this side to Grazio. Plain drops the ball, and it's incomplete. It looked forward from this angle, not a lateral, as in on the coverage is Cooper Levine, and that'll bring up a punt. Positive step here for HFL on defense in holding Batavia from advancing beyond midfield. Now they might get pinned back a little bit deep in their own end, but let's see if their offense can uh, improve on that, that first drive where they really weren't going anywhere but backwards. It's like there well, is no punt. No, there is no punt. They are, well, they are maybe at least going to present and maybe try to draw them offside. No, they're going for it on fourth down. Got to love it. The big bomb right far sideline. It's over the shoulder, and it's in and out of the hands of Cole Grazio Plain. Tough one to come up with, and HFL will take over right at midfield. I love the call. I love the call by uh, head coach Alex Veltz, and I think he dialed up the right play, just weren't able to haul it in at the end there by Grazio Plain. But uh, that would have been, uh, boy, that would have been a dagger. Paul Yakabuchi in on the coverage. As we take a quick break, it's the law office of William Matar's Friday Night Rivals on CW Rochester. Here's the AAA scoring summary for the first quarter. Triple Medicare, AAA has you covered. Scoring summary, there you see it. Makai Fortes, 81 yards. What's so impressive for a, a, a big guy like that, uh, just the speed and able to outrun the whole secondary. Yeah, he's a bull and uh, a hard guy to bring down. And I think for the first few plays on offense where he had some touches, uh, a little intimidating for the HFL defense here. Now, this last drive where they were able to hold him, and hold them uh, to uh, a turnover on downs. An opportunity here for HFL to even things up with the ball at midfield. 
Alexander Steinoff will be one of the receivers here in this pattern on first and 10 at the 50. As Meacham out of the shotgun. Two men in the backfield. Here's the handoff going right up the gut, and that is going to be positive yardage into Batavia territory. We'll call it a gain of six by Ben Cook. It took a few plays, but I, I feel like the HFL sideline has woken up a little bit here, and you're starting to see a good push up front by, by their offensive line. You started to see it defensively as well. They recognize, look, there's a size advantage here with Batavia, but these guys are game, and they're going to be uh, competitive all night. That was defensive coordinator Matt McCracken of the Blue Devils looking at his wristband, getting the play in on second down, and we'll call it four. Meacham again, two men in the backfield, takes the snap, and they're going to get it right back to Cook, and then Cook, he has nowhere to go. Sheldon Silverling, again, able to break through for a loss on the play. Yeah, Silverling is uh, a name that we're calling an awful lot here early on. And he's making his presence felt there on the defensive line for the Blue Devils. Great penetration almost every single play. You're going to have to come up with an answer to try and slow him down there in the middle. Call it a loss of three to bring up third and seven. John Russ calling in the play. Here's the... Screen pass going to Cook. Cook trying to take tacklers with him, leaning forward. He's going to be just shy. Holding on was number five, Grayson Fix. The corner coming up to make the tackle. And fourth down. Yeah, and what is going to be the call here? Boy, I will give uh, Meacham a lot of credit for standing in there, knowing that you have McKay, uh, Mackay Fortes bearing down uh, and ready to ready to take him down positive yardage not quite enough for the first down and it looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth and short Landon Hammond will be the receiver to the far side on fourth down and short man going into motion is going to be Hammond here's the design keeper and movement and that was the wildcat formation is that was actually Connor Finn taking ball, it false start on the offense five yard penalty fourth down These are the plays that drive coaches nuts. You can hear them. They are, they are a little upset at, at that call. And you're right. You have an opportunity in fourth and short. You have the right play called. And the false start negates everything. And now you're forced to punt when you had an opportunity to even things up. Meacham, who does have a leg, kicking it off to his number six counterpart, Grazio Plain. It's going to be high and short. And that's going to take the HFL Roy. Very strategic. Gotta like it if you're an HFL fan. It hasn't gone your way necessarily, but they're right in this thing as Batavia now pinned back in their own territory. You need another series like you had the last series on defense where you can hopefully limit the big plays for Batavia, match up with them in the trenches, play physical, and get them off the field. So the Blue Devils will huddle up. There are the stats there. Fortes already over 100 yards tonight. Buchholz handing it off, and they will rotate different running backs in there. The flag coming down. I think this one's coming back. Holding white 44. You talk about the frustrations on the sidelines for HFL and their penalties. That's one that's going to drive uh, head coach Alex Feltz crazy on the Batavia sideline. You can't have these kind of penalties, these holding penalties, when you're pinned back this deep. So that was a sophomore, Maggio Buchholz, uh, in a fullback position that time. Maggio getting called for the hold, and with this being a long down and distance, he will step off of the field. That's his give a little hand slap to his brother Bronx. But with that area of the field, it's not all that much in terms of the yardage. It's going to be first and 13 now. After the penalty. Handoff going up the middle. Not much there. Harrison Hull and others, linebacker, coming up to make the tackle. As that was the quarterback, Buchholz, on the design keeper. Aaron Fasek, number 55. Again, you mentioned that's one of the 
area is this team a little young here, but we'll see how they come along. Yeah, it is young, and young at key positions. Both linebackers are new. They've got new wide receivers. So week in and week out, they're just going to gain experience, get better here at HFL. And what better way to measure your success than against your chief rival of the Batavia Blue Devils. Keaton Yates is the corner for HFL, but it's going to go the opposite direction, a design rollout, and that's going to be incomplete to bring up third and long. Big play here for HFL defensively when you've got your uh, your opponent pinned back. And I think Buchholz probably want this pass back. Kind of short-armed a little bit there. Yep. At his guy. Yeah, Buchholz trying to throw it there to Justin Smith. Challenging pass as you're rolling out. Not really able to set your feet. Throw it a couple yards short. Third down and 11. Big play for both teams. Buchholz takes the snap in the pocket. Lots of time. Fires. It's going to be caught by Grazio Plain. Grazio Plain is going to be short of the marker. HFL holds. And Buchholz does, you know, with a nice pocket to throw from, finding his target with ease. And credit to HFL converging on Grazio Plain to make sure that he doesn't gain that yards, that yardage needed for the first. Leaving them with a fourth down and a punt. Alexander Steinhoff, one of the players in on the tackle. Jamison Motika to let this one go. Oh, is there a piece of it? It is. This yep. goes straight up into the air. It's a block, but it will get an, it will get a Batavia roll. How do you like that? partially blocked and that will die out at the 47 yard line so with 212 remaining here so our truck is saying not necessarily a piece so you be the judge at home no yep. that was not blocked that's just a not an optimal kick yeah, it looks like the pressure maybe got in his head a little bit there and he wasn't get, able to get full extension Eric Carpy in the truck picking up on that our directors tonight. Plus territory for HFL. Mark in the truck. Got to correct that. Correctly saying that was not blocked. Here's the design screen. Love this play calls. It's going to go for positive yardage and close to the marker. Patrick Donahoe, the running back, as that's the way you set up a screen. First down, and that's good enough. For an American custom next year is an interiors first down. Also, Kangaroo first down. Lakeside Roofing and Contracting, the home of Kangaroo, where we hop to it. Great call by head coach John Russ and great execution on the field by his senior quarterback, Matt Meacham, just waiting and having that blockade in front of his running back. The handoff on first 10, and this is some hard running on the near side. That's going to be Landon Hammond. Hammond on the wide receiver end around and he's saying nope I'm staying in the game here we're good nope now he's coming to the near side so the Cougars getting things going here that's going to go for nine on the play to bring up second down and one Cook back in at running back Meacham the quarterback it'll line up Cook to his right Cook gets the call, bounces off one tackler. He got the first down and more, and he will be brought down by Timothy Murrell. Again, good for another kangaroo first down. Lakeside Roofing and Contracting, the home of kangaroo. We hop to it. Great effort on the run by Ben Cook, who's as impressive off the field as he is on the field, and HFL has something going here offensively here with a short field, good field position to start this drive, and that pressure that we were seeing the Blue Devil defense apply early in this quarter seems to have ceased a little bit here as the quarter wears on. Fortes had a chance to make the tackle, but some hard running by Cook, and they're going to keep it on the ground. A little thunder and lightning, and this time it's the lightning of Connor Finn right up the middle for another positive game. You know, it was something that, that Coach Russ mentioned to us earlier this week. They know how aggressive this Batavia Ooh. defense is. And they're going to use that to their advantage offensively. When they over pursue, you can you can make some yardage there with the screen, but with the screen game, with the, the draw play there. That was a man's block by Ben Cook on that play. A spring thin free. It's second down and three after the gain of seven. 
Oh, and we've reached the end of the first quarter. So we flip sides. So after what was a rough start, HFL fighting back Batavia with the 7 nothing lead. It's the law office of William Matar's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Johnson Automotive Group here on CW Rochester. Closed captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by the Vinyl Outlet. The Vinyl Outlet. The best in fences, decks, railings, and porches. A lot of nice homes down in this area of the county. Gene Battaglia along with Mike Danger, Kevin Roche. On the sideline here is HFL fighting their bit way back here. And a lot of pink in the stands here tonight as well. Breast Cancer Awareness Night here at HFL. Also, Youth Football Night tonight at HFL. So a lot of spirit. Big crowd for the Cougars. Meacham will line Cook up to his right on second and short. Takes the snap, looking, fakes, throws wide open, caught, touchdown, touchdown, HFL, Andrew Wazenreed, the senior. That's an American custom exteriors and interiors touchdown, the home improvement company that cares. Big touchdown pass by Meacham, and I really think it was the kind of like the shoulder bob, the pump fake that kind of froze that Batavia defense and opened it up for Wanson Reed wide open in the back of the end zone. And we've got ourselves a ball game here as the second quarter gets underway. Meacham to attempt the extra point. And HFL beneficiaries of a short field after the defense pinned them back. The short punt, complimentary football, as they say. Yeah, and if you're Batavia, you're frustrated. You've got to be frustrated. But you see on this touchdown pass, the little little pump fake there that kind of freezes everybody and wants to reach. Just getting wide open behind everybody, beating everybody. Bad beat there by uh, number five, Grayson Fix. As you see, Meacham. Hey, look, he's a senior. He's been with this program a long time. Big night for him tonight. We go downstairs to Kevin Roche. All right, guys, thanks so much. We've been to a lot of places over the past three years on Friday Night Rivals, and one of the best student sections resides here, the Cougar Freight Train at HFL, and I'm joined by one of their leaders, Aiden Neenan, a senior and a three-sport athlete here at HFL. First of all, what's the role of a leader? Uh, just being a part of the community, being there for everyone else, and uh, representing HFL. How'd they get its name, the Cougar Freight Train? Yeah, the HFL Freight Train. It's because we're rolling down the track and we're supporting everybody. What makes this student section unique compared to others in the area? Yeah, I think the close-knit community is awesome. I mean, uh, everyone's there for each other. Every sport, everyone's always supporting each other. And when one team wins, it feels like the whole town wins. You mentioned being at every sport. They're not just here for football. They're at other athletic events as well. But you do a lot in the community as well. Talk about that. Yeah, we've done some car washes. We've done uh, breast cancer walks, everything like that. It's awesome. brings the community together. It's a special time. And Aiden also works in the athletic department. He's a social media intern. I have to ask you. All these student athletes, do they get on you at all that you're not posting enough about them? Uh, we try to include everybody to make it equal, and we do the best we can. Is that the hardest part of the job? I think it's, I mean, everything's a blessing. It's awesome. I enjoy all of it. Yeah. It's well, it's, it's good to see the Cougars gave you something to cheer about. Hopefully that continues here tonight. We appreciate your time, Aiden. Absolutely. Thank you. Roll Cougs. Appreciate it. All right, guys. <laughs> Aiden is a, a wise young man there. Thank you, Aiden, for your time as uh, the freight train. That's a really cool nickname for a student section. It is a marvel every time we come to HFL for Friday Night Rivals, the support from the community that comes out, and uh, especially on a night like tonight. Batavia in HFL for the second year in a row, Gene. Yeah, it just it's just random as Bucholtz going deep, and Meyer falls down, mm. and the ball was overthrown. Oh, my goodness, as Carter Mullen was wide open on the left side. But you go back to that. Feels like a missed opportunity. You had your guy after the defender fell. The thing about Blue Colts, he's multi dimensional. Play like that can become routine. You can also make a lot of plays running the ball as well. And somebody that uh, HFL has to spend extra time game planning for during the week. 
Hand off. No, it's going to be a keeper as Buchholz trying to get around that left side. Somehow, he's going to find his way ahead across the 40 and up to the 41 to bring up third and makeable. Third down and five will be the down and distance. Going back to get the call from Alex Veltz. So Maggio Buchholz will be the fullback here on third down and five. Bronx under pressure. Stepping ahead, he's going to try to take it off for it. He's got it. Ducks out of bounds. That's good for a Tracy Door Company first down for three generations. The Tracy Door Company. Tough break for HFL. They're great coverage downfield. Nowhere for Buchholz to throw. But as we've been talking about, he's a dual threat. And he has the ability, under pressure, to tuck it, run, and get the yardage needed there for first down. Models this game after Josh Allen. You saw little, little Josh Allen in that play. Austin Krigo, the defensive tackle, doing a fine job bursting through there, but that forced the play to the outside. So the drive continuing for the Blue Devils. We're in a 7-7 game here in the second quarter. And this time going back to the ground as Buchholz absorbs a hit up high, and he is going to go down in the end. So the read option that time not fooling HFL. Yeah, Cooper Levine first to get in there from the HFL defensive line and kind of slow Buchholz down for the rest of his teammates kind of chime in to bring the uh, junior quarterback down for Batavia. Plus a five on the play. That's Alexander Steinhardt, one of the linebackers, Steinhoff. Second in long. Bugoltz. Flaring it out. There's some room there for Fortes. Fortes turning it upfield and getting those shoulders in the right direction. Aaron Faisa coming up to make the tackle. And it's going to be short of the first down, though. It feels like if Fortes has the ball in his hands, Batavia's offense can do no wrong. He's a hard guy to bring down. I'm not going to say that the, the HFL defenders are shying away from that contact, but let's face it, he's, he's a he's a guy that's going to run downhill with a lot of power. That was a gain of 11 on the play. Maybe this is four down territory. They went for it earlier on fourth down. Inside, nice cut. First down and more. Fortes. Fortes getting tripped up close to the 30-yard line. Good for another Tracy Door Company first down for three generations. The Tracy Door Company. There you go. Fortes once again to get the first down. And just really great vision here. Finding his way through the hole, following his blockers, moving his feet, and then using that speed when he gets into that open field. Big play for Batavia. They're in business once again, Gene. We have a, an injured HFL player behind the play as we take a look at the... Oh, and that is... Uh, that would not be good as that's the defensive end, Ben Cook. Who got up and uh, he is coming off the field. Trainers looking at number one. So Cook will be out at least the one play. So with the injury timeout, let let you know the Rochester Regional Health Halftime Report, your local leader in bone, joint, and muscle care, Rochester Regional Health Orthopedics. And, of course, we'll have this week's Triple O Heating, Cooling, Electrical, and Plumbing Scholar Athletes. Service so good, you're going to find a reason to call. That's all coming up at the half. First and 10 at the 30 after the big game. Buchholz deciding to take off once again. Didn't like what he saw downfield. And he will just get back to the line of scrimmage. Aaron Fasick, one of the players to come in and make a play. That's actually going to go for a loss of one. Yeah, and Owen Englert at the end of the play. Absolutely. With the big hit to finish it off. Big tackle. And you mentioned Aaron Fasick, who was a big part of that game, as, uh, that play as well. Second down and 11. Maggio Buchholz again lined up as a tight end here. Bronx keeping it himself. 
And HFL starting to read their keys once again, and that's Fasic again. Yeah, Fasic is playing real physical there. That linebacker for HFL. They've got two plays in a row where he's come in and really, really imposed his will on Buchholz. Loss of one, the tackle by Fasic. Bringing up third down and 12. Two receivers to the near boundary. Buchholz takes the snap. Under pressure throws, has a man, but he overthrew him. And the flag comes down. Ooh. That, that's not going to be a popular call. They're going to get Connor Finn, but I would say, was that even catchable? I don't necessarily think Finn got his hands on him. It almost looked like they got their feet tangled up a little bit there as they were trying to get some separation. But you bring up a good point. Was that was that ball even catchable? Well, they're going to talk about it here. Here's the call. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yards. First down. All right, so there's a personal foul call that I don't know that I saw. Did yeah, you see it? I did not. So it's not P.I. That's something else. Got a very, very hot John Rush, John Russ on the uh, HFL sideline. Yeah. Let's see if we can see. It's that, it's that little tap. He, he's the ball's overthrown, and when you look at it from that angle, I see why that was thrown. And all the fans at HFL don't want to hear that. There was no reason for that shove. So that gives the automatic first down. The play action, the throw to the end zone, caught. Is he in? Just short. Just short of the goal line, but it'll bring up a first down. We're inside the Eyde family of dealerships red zone. Eyed. we love to earn your business. And we have an injured HFL player down at the end of that play. As see the play action there to Grazio Plain. It's been the uh, primary target of Buchholz tonight. Just shy of the goal line. So there is an injured Cougar that is down on the field. 7-7 seven, seven is our score. If you're just tuning in, first play on offense, 81 yards tonight going uh, for, to Makai Fortes, galloping on the left side. HFL would then counter. We'll take a quick break. It's the law office of William Matar's Friday Night Rivals here on CW Rochester. Our scoring summary here. A lot of pink here tonight. And that was Landon Hammond. The injured player, but he was able to get off the field. He'll be out for at least this play. But now it's a goalie goal situation here for Batavia. First and goal from the one. So coming out for the mandatory one play will be Landon Hammond. Buchholz trying to keep this himself. And the Cougars are saying no, nope, not just yet, as uh, leading the charge, Harrison Hool, the linebacker, number 21. The HFL sideline urging their faithful in the stands to make some noise. Fire up this defense. A little goal line stand opportunity here for the Cougars. The freight train all standing up. The 7 7 game. Caravel Martino, one of the offensive linemen, he is at the right guard position, number 77. 
Buchholz takes the snap. He's going to pitch it. Trying to get to the end zone. That's Fortes in second of the nine. But we have a flag. Coming back. You know, I think some of these mistakes made by Batavia are, are the mistakes that Alex Belts was telling us he wanted to see his team clean up. Repeat, second down. Sheldon Silverling, we left tackle with the hold. It's a team with a lot of talent. Team with a lot of size. But you see Big 75 oh, turning yeah. his player there with his hands on the outside on his shoulder pads. Pretty easy call for the officials to make there. Back him up, second and goal. Low snap, Buchholz will check down, and that'll be wrapped up. How do you like that coming back into the game? Landon Hammond, number two, with a good open field tackle. And fired up as he should be. Hey, let's face it, Fortes up to this point has kind of had his way offensively. Hammond, after a poor snap, closing the gap. Good, good fundamental tackle there. So Fortes not able to get anything forward. It's third and goal from the 11. As we're past the midway point here of the second quarter. Grazio Pleen will be the receiver in the slot to the left. Going all the way out to the far side will be Carter Mullen. This is third and goal. Buchholz takes the snap. Has time. Fires. Back corner in the end over. Grazio Pleen's got a touchdown. Touchdown, Batavia. Cole Grazio Pleen. That's good for another American Custom Inc. Exteriors and Interiors touchdown. The home improvement company that cares. All around great execution by the Batavia offense there. It starts up front with the big guys. And a clean pocket for Buchholz to make the pass. Grazio Pleen getting separation there at the end of the play. Wide open in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Great execution. The out pattern, that is not an easy throw to make. Buchholz just made that look easy. As Here's the extra point attempt. The snap is down. It has the distance. And Batavia is back out in front. Bronx Buchholz to Cole Grazio plane. 14-7 Batavia leaving in the second. It's the law office of William Attar's Friday Night Rivals. Presented by Bob Johnson Automotive Group here on CW Rochester. Wow, that looks like fall, does it not? We will be having our William Matar, the law office of William Matar's player of the game. That's during the fourth quarter. And certainly uh, that is for anybody for the taking here. Beautiful night. We couldn't ask for anything better here tonight. HFL about to receive the kickoff. Matt Meacham behind center. Family affair for Meacham. His older brother was running back in varsity, currently running back at, at U of R, Gene. And his little brother's a sophomore here learning from Matt and preparing to take the next step here on varsity. You know, that's the thing. You you, you realize, especially you come to H HFL, like I'm getting texts uh, from the Kriegel family, uh, oh, friends nice. of the Kriegel family tonight. Just kind of you realize... Just how it is uh, very much a community feel is on the reverse, it's going to be Finn. Finn making a cut, and that will be up ahead, going to about the 25. So, for HFL, I would just say this, you don't need necessarily to score, but you need to at least get some first downs here. Because when we talked earlier to... Their head coach, John Russ, the one thing he said he wanted his offense to do, get first downs. And I think this is the perfect time just to get some first downs here. Give your defense a little bit of a break. Yeah, and keep that Batavia offense on the sideline for sure. Going to take some execution here, and let's see if Meacham is uh, up to task. Getting the call and not much there. So good to see that, uh, remember earlier, Ben Cook was shaken up. He didn't get the call there, but I see him out there, number one. And that's going to be Buchholz, the linebacker, coming up and make the tackle. So Bronx everywhere tonight. Ben Cook, 
We'll have more on him in the fourth quarter. Three wide here on second down and ten. It's the clock rolling on here in the second. Meacham takes the snap throwing. He's got a man that's caught in traffic. Beautiful slant pattern going up to number eight, Alexander Steinhoff. As the tackle is made by Maggio Buchholz. And that's good enough for Tracy Door Company first down. The Tracy Door Company for three generations. Big play on offense to move the change, chains for uh, HFL. And after the play, that... And Maggio uh, Buchholz hit there at the end of the play. Got, these players are playing with so much emotion. There you can see him kind of getting thrown down to the field and a little bit of jawing afterwards. Both teams got to be careful here not to, not to get into a situation where they're taking a costly penalty. Trying to get around the right side. The call this time going to Patrick Dono for his second touch of the night, but that is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of three on the play. Taking a look at Makai Fortes once again. And that linebacking core, very active for the Blue Devils. Yeah, both of these teams defensively have been very physical. Some big hits on both sides of the ball. We'll call it second and 12. Four wide receivers. Meacham. Fires right side wants it all tightly covered and nearly coming up with it Wands and Reed and some great coverage on the far side by number one Carter Mullen Nice play by the Blue Devils secondary there even the linebackers dropping back into coverage They're taking away anything underneath and really forcing the only throw that that Meacham had which was downfield into a situation where his receiver was double covered Big down and distance here for the Cougars. Looking at a third down and 12. Meacham takes the snap. Stands in the pocket, lofting it near side. He has a man wide open, caught 30, 25, 20 along the near sideline. That's going to be number two, Landon Hammond. Flags coming down to the end of the play. Good enough. For Tracy Door Company, first down for three generations, the Tracy Door Company. We're also back inside the Eide Family of Dealerships Red Zone. Eide, we'd love to earn your business. Face mask. Five yard penalty. Here. It's going to be first down. What a big third down conversion. Big play. Big play from a big time player for this program. And Matt Meacham making the throw. And I, I guess we can say that Landon Hammond is, is feeling all right. He was shaken up earlier in this quarter. Great protection by the offensive line, and boy, somebody blew their assignment there for Hammond to be that wide open down the uh, down the sideline. Yeah, not intentional, certainly, by Fortes on that, so that's why he only got the five yards. Is they're going to go to Finn. Finn plowing his way ahead, and he's going to get it inside the five. So they have to go to the full ten here, by the way. It was first and goal from exactly the 10. Yeah, some quick beat, some quick feet by the uh, junior running back. Connor Finn there, 5'11", 180. Well, picking up a big third and 13. Now it's second and goal from the four. Harrison Houle will be in the backfield. Cook is lined up as a tight end on the right. Meacham takes the snap. He'll hand off the hool. Hool trying to lower his shoulder. A lot of pushing. Big old scrum. That's going to be short of the goal line. Despite what uh, some of the players like Austin Kriego putting his arms up into the air. I'd have to think, if you don't get it here, you're going on fourth down. You don't know how often you're going to get these opportunities through the course of the night against Batavia. So, yeah, I would agree with that. Remember, HFL, they do get the ball to begin the second half. So this is a big, big swing here. Can Batavia's defense hold? And give the Cougars credit as well. You, you mentioned it. They got a minute, just over a minute here to go in the first half, and they're milking that clock. Yakabuchi is the only receiver. He's to the far right. Here's the handoff right up the gut. 
It's in. Touchdown. Touchdown. Haniai Falls Lima Cougars. That's good enough for an American custom exteriors and interiors touchdown. The home improvement company that cares. The HFL freight train loving that their team has just hit pay dirt. And it's Connor Finn. Zero. Giving his team an opportunity to tie with the extra point pending. Zero means six. And here is number six, Meacham, for the tie. Snap a little low. Kick is up. And that is going to be through the uprights. So we're under a minute to go here. And HFL can pick it up that big third down. That Meacham throw. Yeah, there have been some mistakes, some mental mistakes made by Batavia that have allowed HFL to stay in this game and, in fact, compete in this game. And I don't know about you, Gene, but if you just came into this game looking at these teams' records, you'd say, oh, this might be a lopsided affair with Batavia being the heritage program that they are. We know how much this program means to HFL. At 0-2 to start the season, these two teams meeting with their records being opposite for the first time ever. HFL is game tonight. They are doing just fine. Well, we talk about rivalries in Section 5. This is one you cannot overlook. You want to stay tuned for the Rochester Regional Health Halftime Report, your local leader in bone, joint, and muscle care, Rochester Regional Health Orthopedics. And we'll also have this week's triple O heating, cooling, electrical, plumbing, scholar athletes. Service so good you're going to find a reason to call. Kevin Roche will be by with interviews. We'll have highlights. We'll have a lot of fun. That's yeah. coming your way. Setting up for an unbelievable second half, too. I mean, both of these teams are set to empty the tank to try and get the win on Friday Night Rivals. Meacham. Again, putting that in a good spot as Grazio playing to the far side. It's going to go outside the numbers and has nowhere to go. Eventually knocked out of bounds. So if you're Alex Veltz, you've got Bronx Buchholz. One of the best quarterbacks in Section 5. Are you trusting him with 50 seconds left on the clock? I think you have not only Bronx Buchholz, you also have Makai Fortes, who's been able to break off some big runs. And you have your full complement of timeouts as well. 50 seconds is plenty of time if Batavia chooses to use it wisely. Get some more points here before the end of the first half, knowing that HFL will get that second half kickoff. Makai Fortes with that 81-yard touchdown run earlier tonight. And... HFL wanted to take a look. You Well, the, it's actually, no, it's not an HFL timeout. It's the, we forgot to get the tee <laughs> timeout. <laughs> the kicking tee. Yeah. Well, thank goodness the officials uh, on top of their game. Uh, Young man, you had one job. <laughs> <laughs> Going right up the middle and uh, not for much. And... The timeout will be called by Batavia. All right, so Alex Velt's kind of making it be known. We're not just going to run the clock here and uh, go to the half. Well, after we talked to him earlier this week, didn't you get the the impression that Coach Velt is all gas, no break? I mean, that's a football guy. That's an intense football coach right there. Part of the program for, for many years where Coach Briggs now doing other things within the school district. Alex Velt's also a, a social studies teacher, too, so. I think both coaches knew going into this game, they, each team was going to give their best effort, that each team understands the importance of this game and what this rivalry means for both communities and both programs. Short gain on that last run. Second down and eight. 42 seconds remaining. And the Blue Devils with two timeouts remaining. Grazio Plain will be in the slot to the near side. To the near boundary will be Mullen. The snap. And it's a play action. Beautiful play action. Is wide open. It's Mullen. Mullen's got it. And Mullen breaks a tackle. And he's going to be down at the 43-yard line. What a well-designed play to get him open. That's good enough for a Tracy Door Company first down for three generations. A Tracy Door Company. Yeah, there was a missed assignment there. He had Grazio playing, attracting attention out of the slot, which left Mullen 
wide open on the outside. 30-yard pass completion there for Buchholz. And yeah, Batavia looking to add on before, they, uh, before the teams go to half. So the range there of Motika, that would be interesting to see. How close do you want to get or take a few shots way down deep? What do you have to lose? So you have to appreciate any coach that believes in his team, though. That's okay. You know what? We're not going to run the ball here and just go to the half. We're going to take a shot here. So one timeout remaining. Delicious food tonight. We want to thank Ruck's Pizza Kitchen here in Honeyoy Falls. I had one of their subs tonight. Cheeseburger, delicious, bud. I'm jealous. You know, I got here a little bit later than I you. I texted you. I know, I know. But look, Eric is no joke. Our director, Eric Carpy, put me right to work as soon as we got here. <laughs> no time for food for you, young man. Get up in that booth. Thank you, Rucks. Really appreciate it here tonight. Here's first and ten as Buchholz trying to buy some time. Throws on the run, and is that a catch? If it is, that's nifty. It is! Wow! And that's going to be Mullen again doing the toe tap on the far side. Good enough for Tracy Door Company. First down for three generations. The Tracy Door Company. Great footwork here to keep those feet inbounds. Haul it in for the first down. Tight coverage there by Paul Yakabuchi. How about this Batavia now at the 29? And this is within striking distance here for the Blue Devils. Trying to make a statement. Buchholz with time. Rolling to his right now. Trying to buy some time. Buchholz is going to throw it away. He throws a wobbler to the end zone. Grazio plates. Bobbled around. He had it for a second. It was stripped away. Big break up there by number two, Landon Hammond. <laughs> Hammond's having himself a pretty nice here uh, first half here for HFL, both sides of the ball as well. Nice job breaking that up at the end. And you knew it was a matter of time before Grazioplin was going to get targeted by Buchholz. He's commanded a lot of attention uh, from this HFL defense all night. Oh, what a great strip there. That play took eight seconds off the clock. We're down to 15 remaining, so maybe two shots at the end zone here. Here's the snap. Buchholz. A lot to look at. Flag coming down normally in the area holding. Buchholz trying to buy some time. He'd maybe be wise just to go down here as the clock now will stop with six seconds remaining. And then I've got a feeling this is going to be backed up even more. Holding number 70 on the offense. That's a center, Ryan Plath. Tough break, because that's going to push you back. And if you were wondering about range, that's not going to make anything easier if you were going to attempt a field goal. I imagine here you'll probably keep the offense on the field and get a shot to the end zone. Number 70 on the offense. We have a timeout. Timeout. So Batavia will burn their last timeout. Why not? And with the ball at the 39, I think Buchholz has the arm certainly to put it to the end zone. So just a good old-fashioned knock-it-down play coming up here for the Cougar defense. Yeah, we'll see what kind of separation his targets can get. Uh, Carter Mullen has been great along the uh, along the boundary. Grazia playing out of the slot has been making plays all night long as well, catching the ball. Nice test here for the HFL secondary late in the first half. See if they can keep Batavia off the board here and send it to halftime tied. Youth football night here at HFL. I feel like when we're here, the, the whole community comes out. Whether every you have year. Breast, every year. Yeah. Breast Cancer Awareness Night, a great cause tonight. Youth football night tonight. You see the kids, the families, the whole community out and supporting their Cougars. Uh, against their arrival here in Batavia. We thank everybody here at HFL for their hospitality. Third straight year we've been here. Here's the last play of the first half is Buchholz. Under pressure, Buchholz. Well, he got stripped. What is the call? And that's going to result here in the end of the first half. 
Odd play to kind of end the half as Buchholz will get sacked. And HFL running off the field quick. They're not going to wait around for the officials to bait this. And a very entertaining first half with our score, HFL 14 and Batavia 14. John Rush is the head coach of HFL. He's standing by with Kevin Roche. All right, guys, thanks so much, Coach. That first play from scrimmage, 81-yard touchdown for Batavia. Your young team could have said, here we go again after those first two weeks, but they didn't. What does that say about this team? Yeah, we're used to giving up a first play touchdown, that's for sure. But, you know, we held together. Um, you know, we battled in, the, in that first half. We just got to make some tackles. They played out, come out aggressive. They want to attack even here in the final seconds. They didn't take a knee and run it into the halftime. Landon Hammond makes a tremendous play down here. What has your defense meant to you here tonight? Yeah, we're certainly bending, but we're not breaking. And we got to continue that in the second half. Um, you know, we got to clean some stuff up. There's some guys running open in the, in the uh, second and then we got to clean up in the, in the second half. Well, best of luck in the second half. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Gene. Thank you, Kevin. That is uh, in his 11th season as head coach, John Ross of HFL. You are watching the Law Office of William Attar's Friday Night Rivals, presented by the Bob Johnson Automotive Group, here on CW Rochester. Glad you're with us here tonight on the law office of William Attar's Friday Night Rivals presented by the Bob Johnson Automotive Group. As it's time now to introduce you to this week's Triple O Scholar Athletes. Ben Cook hails from Honeyway Falls, Lima. He excels in football and lacrosse. Ben is a captain in both sports. In the classroom, Ben carries a 97 GPA. When it comes to volunteering, Ben is involved with the Dream Factory of Rochester. He plans to attend RIT. Harris Price from Batavia High School competes in both cross country and track. He's a medalist in state meets and holds school records. In class, Paris carries a 3.85 GPA. Paris likes to volunteer in the community. The Scholar Athlete Program recognizes students who achieve both on and off the field. Now, at the end of the season, one winner will be selected to receive a $5,000 scholarship to the school of their choice. We're grateful to Triple O Heating and Cooling for their generous support of the Scholar Athlete Program. The superintendent of the HFL School Drift District is Gene Mancuso, and he is standing by with Kevin Roche. All right, thanks so much, Gene, here with Gene Mancuso. And what does it mean to your school district to be featured on Friday Night Rivals now for a third consecutive year? Oh, our kids are so excited to, uh, you know, have a, a moment so everyone at home can see them play. And, and again, they get to, I'm sure they're uh, recording tonight's event as well to, to watch it again tomorrow. It's a, it's a huge event for our whole community. As you can tell, we had a beautiful crowd tonight. Uh, it's been a, always a good time. Had some wonderful news in the news uh, over the last week. The U.S. News and World Report with their annual Best High Schools is out for 2023 in HFL ranking number four in the Rochester metro area. What does it say about this district? Well, I think our community has always been so supportive of everything we do here. And I think between our families and our outstanding professionals that work here, I mean, it's just a reflection on them and it's the work that they do every day. So, uh, you know, again, very proud of that work. And again, we're in, a, in an area here in Monroe County. There's just countless wonderful schools. So we're proud to be just one of them. Fall weekend is coming up. It's also known as homecoming here. September 30th, you take on Geneva in football, but fall weekend is much more than just a football game, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. We uh, have a wonderful alumni group here in town, and they've been celebrating for years. Um, and we'll have a huge event, a parade. We'll close down Main Street. There'll be singing. There'll be music. Uh, and it concludes with a long-distance run because in HFL, besides our lovely football, we also are long-distance runners. So that even happens on a Sunday. Well, the success of your athletic programs, we saw the youth out here tonight. It starts there, doesn't it? You won four sectional titles in the spring with baseball, softball, and both lacrosse teams. It starts with the youth, doesn't it? It starts with the commitment from parents and kids to try different sports. We're a smaller school, just like Batavia. We have to have multiple sport athletes to be competitive, and our kids and families, they, they love to compete, and so they get experiences through youth sports and find their passion, and, and we obviously benefit at the high school level. Well, Gene, have a wonderful year. I know it's just getting started. Best of luck to you here at HFL, and we appreciate your time here tonight. No, thanks for coming out and, and go Cougars. All right. Gene? 
Thank you, Kevin, and uh, thank you, Gene, uh, for having us out here once again tonight. We'll have more, including highlights, coming your way next here on the Law Office of William Matar's Friday Night Rivals on CW Rochester. Back here tonight in HFL, beautiful HFL tonight, and Batavia had a chance there to get some points uh, near the end of the half, but penalties pushing them back, and in the end, we're still tied. Great opportunity ahead here for HFL, too, as they're going to receive the uh, second half kickoff. Now, it's not quite a double dip because you had that uh, Batavia possession before halftime, but... I mean, when this the way this game started, just think that HFL could actually have a lead early in the second half? I don't know that anybody would have predicted that. Well, no. I, like, when we were talking in the beginning, like, HFL was playing a really tough schedule. Waverly, that's the powerhouse down in the Binghamton area, Section 4. And for everybody watching, you know, the fans of Monroe High School are saying, hey, what about us over here? And, yeah, yeah Monroe might be the team. And uh, I don't think there's any shame in HFL falling to, falling to Monroe. Uh, we go back downstairs. Kevin Roche, take it away. All right, Gene, thanks so much. Here with the new principal at Batavia High School, Jennifer Wesp. And Jennifer, you have a connection to the Batavia School District. Your father, I read, went to the John Kennedy School in the district. What does it mean to you and your family for you to now be the principal at the high school? I feel like I've come full circle. When I was a little kid, we would come out to see my great-grandmother, and he would always just drive me by, really, the schools and the area and just tell me how beautiful it was. So I really feel like I found a home. It's awesome. Coming in as a new principal being a principal anywhere is a challenge. What was your message to your student body this year? Just to promote the positive within. You know, they have so many things they do outside of school where they really do step up and are independent, especially with athletics and music and sports. So we're just really promoting that at school, rising to the occasion and doing the right thing. And, and finally, 66 sectional championships over the last 24 years under 80. Mike Bromley, who announced his retirement. How important is athletics to to the overall student life at Batavia or anywhere really it is literally the lifeblood so they were talking about it before I came I heard all about it I got to look through the stats before I was even part of the Batavia team it is amazing so we are definitely proud and we are a community that is football oriented well it's a good one here tonight best of luck in your first year at Batavia we appreciate your time here on Friday Night Rivals thank you have a great night thanks so much Jennifer West the principal at Batavia High School Gene thank you Kevin as uh, we we have the teams warming up. We'll have some highlights coming up next, and then we will have the third quarter coming up. So, Law Office of William Matar's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Johnson Automotive Group here on CW Rochester. Welcome you back here to Honeyoy Falls, Lima, for the Rochester Regional Health Halftime Report. And it's a 14-14 game. Alex Veltz is the head coach of Batavia. He's standing by with Kevin Roche. Thanks, Gene. Here with Coach Veltz. Coach, uh, you said you wanted your offensive line to be physical. Well, they were. They opened that hole on the very first play from scrimmage. How did that play set the tone for tonight? That's exactly how we wanted to start things out. We wanted to get off the ball, set the tone, control the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's our MO as a football team, and that's what we want to do. And finally, in a rivalry like this, HFL didn't go away. They fought back. What do you expect to see from them in the second half? You know, they're going to continue to air out the football. Um, their quarterback's very good. Um, we got to make sure we're on task with our coverages, make sure our guys are in the right spot, and getting pressure on them, absolutely. Best of luck in the second half. Should be fun. Thank you very much. Gene? Thank you, Kevin. Second half coming your way next. It's the Law Office of William Matar's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Johnson Automotive Group here on CW Rochester. We are ready for the start of the third quarter. Both teams back out onto the field, 14-14. Uh, Mike Danger, our color commentator, once again tonight. Mike, give me one thing both teams need to do here tonight in order to take this game here on Friday Night Rivals. So if Batavia, you know, is going to get this one, they got to do what their coach was just saying they, they, their plan was here all along, which is control the line of scrimmage offensively. You've got size, uh, and, and if you're... 
if you're HFL offensively, look, you've been running to set up the pass. Meacham's made some critical throws when needed. You're in this game. Uh, despite the slow start to the season, you know, you can tell the emotion is is a wave that these kids are riding. And I'm, I'm looking forward. This is going to be a competitive second half, really uh, entertaining second half ahead. The second half kickoff brought to you by Bill Gray's. Give me, give me, give me some Bill Gray's. And over in kick, that's going to be at the 15 up to the 20. And then brought ahead and breaking arm tackles is Patrick Donahoe. So a lot of different players we've seen with some positive plays tonight. Donahoe amongst them. And then it'll be up to the 35. Grazio Pleen and the rest of the secondary ready here for Batavia. I want to mention while we have a second here, Michael Meisenzal, who was injured early in the game. The uh, 5'10", 150-pound junior wide receiver for HFL. He's on the sideline. He's on crutches. He's got his right leg wrap but good to see him on the sideline with his teammates yeah hopefully it's uh, nothing too serious as now here will be the throw left side and that will be caught a short gain on the play and that's a good open field tackle by carter mullen prevents something bigger as that goes out to landon hammond And we'll actually call that a gain of six. So this will bring up second down at four. Wands and Reed. He's got a touchdown tonight. He's the receiver to the near boundary. Man going into motion. And it is going to be Hammond on the end around. He gets the first down, lowering his shoulder. He'll be driven out of bounds right in front of the HFL bench. As we'll want to let you know, that was good for a kangaroo first down Lakeside Roofing and contracting the home of kangaroo if we hop to it. Yeah, and there you see who we were just talking there on the sideline there, Michael Meisenhall. Uh, we knew it was some sort of a leg injury the way he came off the field in the first half. Luck luckily, uh, he's, he's good enough to be there with his teammates now, and you can see the support he's getting from his teammates. It means a lot to his team. 14-14, our score opening drive here of the third quarter. Two receivers to the left and two to the right. Meacham takes the snap. Here comes the blitz. Meacham avoids it. Meacham, can he throw it away? Yes. Smart play by number six, preventing a negative play. Yeah, you saw Husinger, Nate Husinger, the uh, senior defensive back, come in unabated there, untouched, just uh, applying the pressure. And a nice job by Meacham to avoid that pressure and do the smart thing, just throw it away. And a good call by Matt McCracken on defense there for the Blue Devils. This will be second down and 10. Batavia is sticking with the three down lineman. Meacham fires, wants his man Waz and Reed and trying the one handed grab and got a hand on it but could not pull it in. This will bring up now third down as on the coverage, Davon Gallo Williams. Meacham going back to Coach Russ. I mentioned it's a family affair. Meacham's younger brother, Nate Meacham, sophomore at 6'2", 155, also plays quarterback, waiting in the wings. <laughs> yes, well, if we come back next year, and hopefully we will, who knows? We'll get another Meacham, play action. Meacham fires over the middle and going up the ladder, and it's incomplete. And I'll bring up fourth down. Cole Grazio clean with the stick, and now he'll go back to return the punt. So, a little tip of the cap to the Batavia defense. Doing what they had to do, and that is get off the field. Yeah, both defensive hit defenses have been playing very physical tonight. You saw another big hit there uh, with Justin Smith. Number 80 for Batavia on that play. Now Meacham has a good leg. And this is going to be another high kick that could take an HFL bounce. It, oh, running ahead uh, was Hanman trying to sell it was touched. It was not. As we step aside, Batavia to take over on offense when we come back. It's the law office of William Attar's Friday Night Rivals. Presented by the Bob Johnson Automotive Group here on CW Rochester.
Well, you want to stay tuned for the conclusion of tonight's game. We will be selecting the law office of William Matar's player of the game. Hurt in a car? Call William Matar. I honestly have no idea what that player's going to be at this point. Normally, you get an idea. That's Tonight, a big, yeah, yeah. yeah, TBD. Yeah. yeah. A lot of football left to play here in the second half. And I can't tell you how impressed I am by HFL after starting the season 0-2 against some really, really competitive teams. Hanging with Batavia, you can just tell the emotion, that, that they're, the wave of emotion that they're riding this game, keeping them in this game. You know, they're not... Uh, they're not as experienced. They're certainly more youthful than Batavia. And Batavia has a little bit of a size advantage as well. Yet HFL knotted up here in the second half. Ben Cook back on the defensive line position here. As it'll be the handoff going to the opposite side. And that is a good first down run for the Blue Devils. And why not go back to your main man? That'd be Makai Fortes. Positive game there as they will mark that across the 35 up to about the 36 or 37 gain of eight. Fortes had over 100 yards rushing in the first quarter. So I would imagine that, yeah, they're going to, you know, give him uh, the football, give him his touches here in the second half as he's been a tough one to stop for this HFL Cougars defense. Gain up to the 27. Here's Bukholz out of the shotgun. And he will hand off once again. This will be good enough for the first down. Going right back to Fortes. And that's good enough for a lakeside roofing and contracting first down. Kangaroo Roof. We hop to it. Let your big guys up front. Get a little bit of a push. Create some space. Create some holes. And let Fortes do his thing. Ball is at the 31. First and 10 here for the Blue Devils. Do they go back to Fortes? They do on the delayed handoff, trying to run between the tackles. That time, not much there. A lot of black and gold there. That's yellow, Gene. <laughs> okay, we know what gold looks like. That's, that's Angler, black and yellow. Austin Kriego. Can we get the rule? It's black and gold, correct? It's black not... and yellow. Black and gold, black and yellow. It's black and yellow, right? Okay. I'd like to go to the official Section 5 website that says black and gold. Oh, you're so official. Why there, don't you use your therefore, eyes? <laughs> therefore, I am right. Here's the play action. Buchholz going deep. Wanting a man. It's underthrown. And that's a good pass breakup. Wow, what a great play by Paul Yakabuchi. As Carter Mullen was trying to adjust to the underthrown ball, and Yakabuchi, one of those plays that's dangerous for a defensive back. Uh, you sometimes get a flag on that. Yakabuchi just playing the ball there yeah. perfectly. Did a great job just getting his arms up, waving his arms, kind of breaking it up without affecting the wide receiver there. Not too badly, at least. No call on the play. And Nice pass break up by 22 in black and yellow. Third and 10. As now here will be the snap of pitch going to Fortes. No, it's a trick play. Fortes winding up, going deep. It's under thrown. And Yakabuchi again yeah. in on the coverage. Well, he might have gotten away, away with one on the last play. This play, it looks like the refs. You didn't, you know, really turn your head. You didn't try to make a play on the ball. You could have affected the path of the receiver there, and they might get Yakabuchi for a pass interference on this one. What do you think of the call there? A little trickery. Yeah. I would just say for Fortes, you got to try to sell it a little bit. On the defense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. It's going to be a first down. Yakabuchi disgusted with himself, throwing his helmet on the field. On the sideline here for HFL, he's going to take a spell. And they went to him two two plays in a row as if they knew they had something. Oh yeah, there's the hold. He gets that right arm up in the air. Officials calling it a good game here tonight. Ball at the 46. Drive continuing, and that's going to be the near side to Mullen. As Bronx Buchholz gain up right to the 50 yard line for a gain of four.
They'll actually mark it out at the 49, so they'll only go for three. Blue Devils drove at the end of the first half, but came away with nothing. Here they're looking at a second and seven at their own 49. Movement ahead, and HFL is signaling against <laughs> Batavia. I think Austin Kriego wanted a, wanted a, a flag on that. Ball start on the center, the five-yard penalty. So second down. Ryan Plath with his second penalty tonight. Back to the 44 this will go. See Austin Kriego there right above center playing defensive tackle for HFL. Wants to get back to sectional final for uh, these Cougars. And uh, after high school, going to head down to Georgia for some SLTC training. A little non-traditional path. Yeah, it will be a linesman. I love that. Here's going to be... Now the throw, deep right side, and it's going to be intercepted. Finn, Finn has it. Up to the 40, up to the 45. The interception on the overthrown ball by Connor Finn, our first turnover of the evening. Boy, Buchholz has uh, underthrown a couple of deep passes. Not this one. He overthrew this one. And right there, Connor Finn on the spot. Perfect positioning, getting the turnover, and a Ooh. massive opportunity here. As you see Finn kind of gingerly getting off the... Field. As we take a look, and, and you can see on the yeah. return there the uh, tackle that, that was by um, Fortes. Fortes going down low there. Low. So we'll see if uh, Finn returns here, but he kind of came off a little gingerly. So Cook will not be on the field, and so the HFL defense big takeaway in a tie game. It'll be Donahoe as the tailback. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Matt Meacham. Delayed handoff to Donahoe. And with a tackle, Brian Calderon. One of the captains of that team. Number 52. You get those big guys up front for this Batavia defense. 75. Sheldon Siverling. I mean, he's he was during our call with uh, the team captains. We we just want to punch HFL in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, you got the feeling they were ready to play that night yeah. when we talked to him. Third year on the team, and he, he's got that size, boy. Taking the end around, Meacham sets up the middle screen to Donahoe. Donahoe, nowhere to go. And yeah, Batavia sniffing that one out. Nate Husinger. And they'll bring up a third and long. No gain on the play. Well, on the touchdown scoring drive, the second one, HFL picking up a third and 13 to keep the drive alive. This is a third and 10. Wanzen Reed will be one of the three receivers to the near side. He's closest to the sideline on your screen. The snap. Looking to that right side is Meacham. Meacham not liking it, trying to buy some time. Meacham trying to buy more time, throws on the run. Sidearm. And is it caught? Incomplete. It'll be short. It is not caught. He is out of bounds. And Batavia forcing the three and out. I expect that Batavia's secondary is going to tighten it up a lot here in the second half based on what we heard from head coach Alex Veltz here at the start of the second half. That There were some guys for HFL in that first half uh, getting a lot of space and running free in the secondary and there's some evidence that uh, coach's message got through to his team at halftime is there was nothing downfield for Meacham to target. Grazio playing once again deep back and this has been kind of uh, an interesting part of the game too. The punt game has worked well here tonight for HFL in terms of flipping field position. They're going to try to do this once again. And this will be a low end over end kick that is going to take a Batavia bounce. So for the first time tonight, uh, Batavia will not be pinned back after a punt. This will start them at their own 33. We will step aside here tonight. We are in the third, a tie game. Batavia HFL, the law office of William Attar's Friday Night Rivals here on CW Rochester.
We welcome you back. Looking at the AAA scoring summary for the third quarter. Triple Medicare, AAA has you covered. <laughs> wow, this is now really tightening up here in the third. HFL, after giving up that opening touchdown run, just one score allowed after that. With a freight train, student section for the uh, HFL Cougars. A little bit of intensity here as the game uh, winds down here in the third quarter. Brock Warren will line up as the tight end to the right, and you wonder at what point do they go play action and use their tight end. Buchholz handing it off once again, and not much there for Makai Fortes. Bottom of that pile, Owen Englert helped to his feet. Nice job by the defensive line there, preventing Batavia from setting any sort of edge, getting good penetration, preventing any sort of big gain there from a guy who's sort of had his way tonight. And Fortes. Grazio's clean to the near side. Buchholz pitching it to the right. It's on the turf. That's a live ball. And very smart there just to fall on it and avoid further damage was Fortes, but this will bring up third and long. You know, based on how the first half ended and how the second half has started for this Batavia offense, I don't know if you feel this way, if you see it yourself, Gene, but it doesn't. don't you get the sense that they're a little bit frustrated with themselves, that the, the emotion of this game might be getting to them a little bit? Little mental errors like that, the ball on the turf, they're not as crisp as they look to start the game, offensively at least. Well, this is Batavia's turn to pick up a big third down. Third and 14. Buchholz, design run. He's taking off to the near side. One man to beat around the near corner. Cannot gets offended and making the tackle there is number nine Keaton Yates the corner that gets up to the 35 to bring up fourth and eight and we have a player that's down right in front oh goodness and it is that Buchholz it is Buchholz yeah I think you're right and we'll have to see how he was tackled there by his foot. Looks like there was a little bit, maybe a, an ankle twist, possibly. Oh, he goes oh, to grab the grabbing back of his leg. Yeah, grabbing his calf. Now, Carter Mullen is also listed on the Blue Devils roster as a quarterback. Right now, hoping that... Buchholz is able to get to his feet. Hopefully make his way to the sideline here and that this isn't too serious an injury as they yeah, can stretch just him out a little just, bit. Maybe just a cramp and that is uh, great news as Buchholz able to get up. You know, they were working on his right calf. Remember, he's also the middle linebacker here, too, in that 3-4 yep. uh, alignment. So, decision time, do you, if you're Alex Veltz, so you just give your quarterback here a series off on defense. Jamison Matika, once again, to punt it away. And the HFL defense forcing a three and out there. Three runs going nowhere for Batavia. Here's the play, and having to pull it down is Motika. He's running for the marker. Motika, he's got it. That's not the way it was drawn up, but with the pressure right in, improvisation by Jameis in Motika. Boy, that's one that the HFL special teams unit is going to wish they had back. The pressure was amazing. You got through. You would have had the block. Motika wisely... Tucking in and run, and there's the missed opportunity. 52 had the opportunity there. Austin Kriego got got deked by Motika right there. And you had him in the backfield, or at least short of the sticks. So who's that quarterback now? As Jamison Motika coming up with a play. 
And it will be Buchholz right back. Able to walk that off last time. And the handoff going right up the gut. Zalen Griffin, the junior running back, getting his first touch of the evening. No gain on the play. Uh, the, the, with Buchholz in the ankle and working on the calf. What happened Monday night, I mean, you don't have to be a fan of Aaron Rodgers just to say, oh, that's not good for football when right. you have an injury like that. Right. Second down and 10. Two receivers to the near boundary is Buchholz. Play action. Lots of time. Fires, and it's just a little high. Carter Mullen over the middle, and now Mullen is slow to get up. You had Austin Kriego on the uh, on the coverage there. Yeah, a little bit high on the pass from Buchholz. Trying to see if Carter came down kind of awkwardly. Maybe this angle will pick it up. And it's, we're showing that to you. Mullen is uh, able to get up, and he is walking off himself, number one. It's now to bring up third down. Third down and ten. What has been a bruising third quarter. Play action rolling to his right. Fires far side as a man. It's caught by Grazio Pleen. First down. Cole Grazio Pleen in Batavia converting down third and ten. And first down brought to you by Kangaroo. Lakeside Roofing and Contracting, the home of Kangaroo. We hop to it. Nice job by Grazio Pleen on that play. Just finding the soft spot of the HFL defense. Getting both feet down, obviously. And Buchholz delivering the strike for the first down. What I like with Grazio playing on that play, catch the ball with your hands. That's right. Exactly. First and 10 at the 45. Clock rolling on Batavia into HFL territory and back to the ground game, back to Fortez. And Fortez will be tackled from behind by Aaron Facek. Not before he leans forward to get a gain of four on the play. I want to say, we, when it comes to us sitting with the fans, I think this is the closest we are <laughs> in Section 5. As Aaron Fasick's family, just two rows ahead of us here tonight, yeah. appreciative of their son's tackle. And Cooper Levine coming off the field and getting a big cheer from his supporters as well. Here's the low snap and the handoff going right up the middle. Maybe that low handoff. The timing wasn't quite there, but Becton able to make a little bit of it. Harrison Hull coming up to make the tackle, but this is third and makeable. Third down and three, the down in distance. Grazio playing to the far side. Does Buchholz go back to him? Throwing far side, and he missed fires. Beautifully designed play, looking for his younger brother Maggio to simply overthrow him. Well, I don't think there's any surprise here what uh, Batavia's plans are on fourth down. They're in plus territory. I would expect that they would go for it here. Yep, at the 38. Good pressure there uh, coming from holding Cam on the defensive end, number seven. See if HFL dials up any pressure here on fourth down. Fourth and three. HFL sending extra people. Bukos gets hit, throws far side, still caught. But is it short? It yeah. is incomplete. It's actually incomplete. And the HFL defense holds 
passes. And that Blake Buchholz was belted as he let it go. Yeah, it all started with that extra pressure. Dialing up a blitz on fourth down. And Buchholz not, a, not able to deliver an accurate ball to get the completion, which would have been a first down. So we have re reaching the final minutes here of the uh, end of the third quarter. And HFL's defense holding once again. 14-14, our score remains. Wanson Reed to the near boundary. Landon Hammond to the near side. Meacham, and now HFL looking at a blitz too as Meacham fires. Wanson Reed on a costing pattern. First down and more. 40 to the 36. He gets upended. The tackle by Carter Mullen. That's good enough for a kangaroo first down. Lakeside roofing and contracting the home of kangaroo if we hop to it. Meacham again, you know, using his body language to kind of freeze the Batavia defense. I think a lot of Batavia thought that that was going to be a screen pla uh, pass to the flat before looking downfield to Wanson Reed wide open. Nice run after the catch as well for number 11 there. Andrew Wanson Reed. Good enough for a gain of 29 and HFL now into plus territory as we're under a minute to go here in the third. Meacham with his man into motion. Long count. Takes the snap, handing it off and going right up the middle is Donahoe. As the tackle will be made by the defensive back, Davon Gallo-Williams coming up, but not before a nice gain of about six. Patrick Donahoe. As Ben Cook is back in there, and they'll employ Cook sometimes at, at tight end, sometimes at running back. He'll be in the backfield here. Could be the last play of the third quarter. And maybe HFL is just going to take it to the corner. And they yeah. will. Looks like he's trying to get him to jump. We have reached the end of the third quarter. And this, as they say, is anyone's game. It's the law office of William Attar's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Johnson Automotive Group. Batavia 14, Honey Oil Falls Lima 14. We go to the fourth here on CW Rochester. Back from HFL, we are getting ready to start the fourth quarter. Ben Cook, our scholar athlete here of the week at HFL, and his parents standing by here with Kevin Roche. Yeah, that's right. Number one for HFL is Ben Cook, a running back, a defensive lineman, and an entrepreneur. Happy to be joined by Jeff and Lindsay Cook, uh, Ben's parents. And Jeff, you own your own company, Cook Properties, and you told me the other night that Ben had a chance to work with you and your staff during COVID when he came to you and said, I want to start my own business. What was your initial reaction and how did that experience working with you help him? Uh, the first thing was we had to make sure we did it. He did it right and got the, the correct insurance and uh, set up the business structure uh, in, the, in the right manner. It's called Cook Outdoor Contracting, and they specialize in tree services, hardscaping, and landscaping. Lindsay, I have to ask, how does a 17-year-old manage school, football, and he also plays lacrosse and run a successful business at the same time? He gets up very early in the morning. Um, he's super organized with his time, and he works pretty late at night. Late. Yeah, I mean, he he functions on a little bit of sleep, but um, I think he sleeps hard when he sleeps. So um, he's just very organized, and he knows he's got a plan every morning when he wakes up, and he makes it happen. Absolutely. You mentioned it. He's fully insured. He pays his own insurance. He rents some of the equipment in town that he uses. And he also told us he gets some of his teammates to be his employees as well he seems to have it all figured out but when does he come to mom and dad for with questions when he needs to yeah, yeah i mean he, he's pretty self-sufficient so figuring out, taxes, yeah. figuring out the taxes you know that's a confusing thing so yeah. we're, we're here for him yeah absolutely i bet for a 17 year old and he's going to continue to expand on his business knowledge next year guys he'll be at rit at the saunders business school he's also going to play for the division three powerhouse lacrosse team run by jay coon up at rit thank you so much jeff and Lindsay, and best of luck ben next year at rit guys
All right, thank you, and that is an uh, unbelievable story as we take a look at Ben as we begin the fourth quarter, and it is going to be uh, the turnover on downs. So HFL able to uh, get it going a little bit, but it's going to be Batavia taking over. Boy, it's 17 years old. I'm just like him, though. I'm confused by taxes as well. So <laughs> maybe we can get his parents to connect with me come April. Well, <laughs> Seriously, like how impressive is this? It's, it's amazing. It's amazing, and and he's going to do great things at the next level. You know, playing lacrosse at RIT is no joke, uh, and going to the Saunders Business School, he's well on his way. Just a tremendous story uh, here at HFL. Is now Becton bobbled that, and he has no choice but to kind of go down right away. As uh, that was Steinhoff, close enough to make the tackle. Yeah, like, I, it's just a small observation. The, the Batavia offense just feels a little off, just a hair off from how crisp they were to start this game. And it's little things like that, the, the bobbled exchange there between Buckholtz and, and Fortes. Little details that I know my head coach Alex Veltz wants his team to clean up here this week. Yeah, this hasn't been the cleanest of games for Bronx Buchholz either. He's got an interception. Few overthrows. Here's the play action. He's going to loft it left side, and that's a miscommunication. Closest was Carter Mullen, but that was uh, about 10 yards away, yeah. and now brings up third down. A lot of emotion on both sides of the ball, but you can just tell there's a little bit of a frustration happening right now with this Blue Devils offense. They need to rein in that emotion and focus on what they need to do to execute here. HFL fans making noise, sensing the opportunity to get their offense the ball back here on third down and ten. Is that the freight train we've heard so much about? That is the freight train banging on the... Uh, and we, with that, Batavia sensing the importance of this, they're going to take the time out to talk this over with 9.52 remaining. Truck will hate me for saying this. Dare I say in regulation? <laughs> yeah, let's take a look back at how we got here tonight. And for Batavia, this was right off the bat. Crazy. 81 yards. Makai Fortes showing size and speed, outracing the whole HFL defense. And Batavia off to the great start. But then HFL just playing smart football, working their way slowly down the field. There's Donahoe, and here's going to be the end around going to the wide receiver, Hammond. This is how you get first downs, just kind of mixing it up now. It's going to be Cook's turn to run between the tackles, spitting off the tackles. Yeah, you had a lot of running to set up the pass. And everybody contributing out of that backfield for HFL, leading to this, the pump fake, and then the wide open. Andrew wants and read for the touchdown. Donahoe to Wands and Reed. That's Fortes running hard. This would set up the Grazio Queen touchdown eventually as we're getting ready here to go back to live action. Third down and 10 is the down and distance. Here's the snap, the throw near side. That's going to be caught along the near side as we're still showing the highlights. It's going to be now short. There's going to be the play that's going to be going down the near side. Landon Hammond. And that would set up eventually the Finn touchdown. So now it's fourth down and one. And Batavia, are they really going to go for it? They're huddling up as they are. And now they're at 10 seconds on the play clock. The back judge counting it down. Maybe they're just trying to draw them off sides. And there is your delay of game. Delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. Pretty obvious what they were trying to do there. <laughs> Got 
the HFL supporters reminding yeah. the, the sideline and reminding the special teams unit here to watch out for the fake. Jamison Motika on what was really a busted play. And no, he couldn't get the punt off, but he took off and got that first down with his legs. Here's Motika to punt it away. The tie game of the fourth quarter. Motika gets it off. This is a moonshot that's going to go over the head. You know, just down at the 30-yard line. Cougars take over in their own territory in a tie game of the fourth. It's a law office of William Matar's Friday Night Rivals presented by the Bob Johnson Automotive Group. And you're watching CW Rochester. It's a triple-A scoring summary. Triple Medicare, triple-A has you covered. And, Mike Danger, are you surprised that we have goose eggs here in the second? Not really. I mean, uh, both teams are kind of playing a little bit tense. You can tell that, that they're kind of trying to wait for the, They're looking to see who's going to blink first, right? Like, the, they're both uh, playing with a, a level of intensity that we didn't really see. We saw some of it in the first half from time to time. But, boy, I, I'm just impressed by both of these both of these programs and, and every one of these players recognizing what this rivalry means, not giving up an inch to each other, doing their best to capitalize on each other's mistakes, trying to play mistake-free. It's just been a wild, uh, a wild night, a lot of fun here in HFL. Davon Gallo-Williams will be the single high safety here for Batavia. HFL starting uh, first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. The snap, Meacham looking right, firing right. It's going to be just behind the intended receiver. That was his favorite target, Andrew Wazenreid, the senior. Incomplete. And we talked about how the pressure of the HFL defense has affected the play of Bronx uh, Buchholz and, and the Batavia offense and I'm wondering if the Batavia defense here will dial up some pressure to try and affect Meacham who's had some time here recently when trying to throw the ball four wide receivers this is now second down and ten Meacham here's the blitz here's gonna be the throw and it's off the hands of ones and Reed and quickly now HFL staring down a third down and ten yeah it's a good job there by Maggio Buchholz who got it to the backfield there breaking through the offensive line to put some pressure on Meacham. So Wands and Reed is the player to kind of watch. He's to the near boundary here. They're going to go four wide. This is on third down and ten. Meacham, the senior quarterback, rolling to his right, trying to buy some time throwing on the run. It's going to be caught on the far side. He's in bounds, you betcha. That's number 11, Andrew Wands and Reed. How do you like that? First down for the Cougars. That's good enough for Tracy Door Company. First down for three generations, the Tracy Door Company. Meacham has had something going with Wands and Reed for, for quite some time. As the, the senior to senior connection here, a couple of guys that have been in this program uh, for many, many years. So good chemistry there. And when you need to make that big play, yeah, six is going to connect with 11. Number zero, Connor Finn. He's got a touchdown tonight. And he'll be one of the players to go into a pattern here. He's to the near boundary on first and 10 at the 43. Yes, yeah, so that'll be sacked. Yeah, this one, he actually had uh, Meacham lining up wide with Finn in the backfield trying a little trickery there and it backfired against the Cougars here for now a second and long second down in 15 Maggio Buholz Grayson Fix will be the corner to the near side on second down and 15 Meacham with four down linemen Steps up, throws, then batted around, it's off the hands, and it's intercepted. It goes off of the hands of number two, Landon Hammond, and coming up with it is the, going to be the corner, number five, Grayson Fix. 
We have a flag, though, so let's see what that's all about. This is a huge call. Was the contact there early? Maybe that's what they're trying to figure out. Long discussion here. What do you think they're talking about here? I know there's a flag on, yeah. on the play, but did you see a foul? I didn't. I don't know that I saw a penalty on that I, play. I, the only thing I could come up with was their early contact on that. They have a personal foul. Defenseless receiver. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty. It's going to be second down. Wow. I think there's confusion on LA Batavia. They, they don't realize they're on defense here. They've got to get an explanation. A defenseless receiver. That's a huge call to make. Yep, and Alex Veltz wants a word with, with our official tonight, David Cohen. So you see Meacham, the pass downfield, and the defenseless receiver was... Oh, um... Right there would be your defenseless receiver, and I guess there's a collision, but I don't like know it that... It goes off the helmet. Yeah. It goes off of the helmet of Cole Grazioplane. I do not agree with that call. That is a tough one to go against Batavia. We can hear the angry Batavia supporters across the field from here in the booth. Not appreciative of that call. The pencils receiver, 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, this is now HFL given new life on what looked to be a clear interception. They get the ball back now in Batavia territory. Back to Donahoe. Big gaping hole. Donahoe, first down yardage across the 20. Just make that the 35. And down to the 33. That's good for a Tracy Door Company. First down for three generations. The Tracy Door Company. Great push up front. Nice hole. Movement by the offensive line of the Cougars. Donahoe does the rest. The 5'10", 170-pound senior. Gain of 15 on the play. Landon Hammond will line up to the right of this formation. Cook is now in the backfield as well. HFL on the move. Meacham looking to Cook. No, he's going to throw across the middle. It's going to be caught by Wands and Reed. And Wands and Reed. That slant pattern has been there for him all night. They're into the red zone. First down. Played good for another Tracy Door Company. First down for three generations. The Tracy Door Company. We're also back inside the Ide family of dealership red zone. Ide, we'd love to earn your business. Meacham's been doing this all night. I mean, he's he's been using the run to set up the pass and, and finding his guy with regularity there. Uh, Andrew Watson Reed once again, big gain through the air for the Cougars. Batavia on their heels after that call. Back to the ground game. It's going to be Connor Finn, number zero. He's going to be close to the marker. And that's going to be good for another Tracy Door Company. First down for three generations. The Tracy Door Company. First and goal for HFL. Clock continues to run as well now as we approach the halfway point of the fourth quarter. Finn and Cook, both in the backfield. Meacham, who knows the importance of this. He patterns his game after Adru Luck. Meacham, 
fires, corner, end zone, caught, touchdown, touchdown, again, ones and read, HFL takes the lead, it's an American Custom Exteriors, an interior touchdown, the home improvement company that cares. Boy, it was one of the things we talked about coming into this game, how this team, this HFL Cougars team is young at some key positions with new wide receivers, but one guy that has been a constant, the touchdown scorer here for his second of the night, Andrew Wands and Reed, the six foot 165 pound senior, going up and getting it. Great pass by Meacham, who's been impressive all night. And with a little bit of help from that penalty call, HFL about to take their first lead of the night. This for an important extra point, it has the distance, and Meacham making it a seven point game, 21 to 14. Danger. See what happens here when we come back. It's the law offices of William Attar's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Johnson Automotive Group, HFL 21, Batavia 14, here on Cedar Mully Rochester. Closed captioning for tonight's game brought to you by the Vinyl Outlet. The Vinyl Outlet. The best in fences, decks, railings, and porches. We talked about how HFL uh, has gotten off to an 0-2 start the season. Their competition uh, to start the season has been fierce. One thing of note, guy that just scored the touchdown, Andrew Wanzenry, two touchdowns tonight. This is first action this season. Yeah. And I'm curious as to what those outcomes weeks one and two would have been if you had a healthy Andrew Wansenry, because you could see that connection between quarterback and wide receiver. Wansenry making his presence felt here tonight for HFL. Cougars to let this one go. And for Batavia, just my opinion here, you, you could almost see the defense kind of let down after that penalty call. After that penalty, just tough to kind of get it back. Now, if there's one guy that can you know, make a tie uh, game here in just one second, that's Fordes, number 10. And he's going to have a crack at this at the 12 to 15, trying to find a little room, and he's going to scooch forward and gets it across the 30. So the Bill Gray's kickoff. Give me, give me, give me some Bill Grace. Lots of time left, 529 remaining, but... Batavia's got to put a move on it here. Look at Coach Belts on the sideline for Batavia. Told us how he knew HFL was talented. And they weren't going to take them lightly despite their record. I don't know if they've taken them lightly, but I think they might be a little bit surprised at just how well HFL has hung with them tonight. First and ten... And they're going to be patient and go back to the ground game. Cortez getting it across the 35. Up to, you know, the market just shy of the 36. Cheerleaders doing their part here tonight at HFL. Call that a game of two. It's second down and eight. Ron Spookholtz, design run, running ahead, lots of room, and nearly getting free. Touchdown saving tackle, we could say, by Alexander Steinhoff, but that's good enough, again, for a Tracy Door Company first down for three generations of the Tracy Door Company. Yeah, it's the one part of his game that we haven't seen a ton of tonight, what he can do with his feet, and he was a little gimpy earlier tonight. Looks like his ankle or his calf, whatever was bothering there, his right leg is uh, no worse for the wear. Big gain, biggest gain of the year, uh, of the uh, evening on the ground for Buchholz tonight. Yeah, up to the 50-yard line this goes. Three receivers to the right. Fortes is the single setback. Here comes the run blitz. And Buchholz sensing it's going to step up. He's going to take what's given. And that's a nice gain on first down across the 45 and up to about the 42. Take what the defense is giving you. Bronx, Bronx Buchholz uh, patterns his game after Josh Allen. I wonder if he could, you know, have a conversation with Josh before <laughs> the Sunday afternoon. Say, right. You know what, Josh, just take what the defense is giving you. Here's some film of me on Friday night. Play smart, not conservative football. 
Second and three. Batavia not panicking here. The lineup as a tight end will be Maggio Buchholz. He's to the left of this formation. And the handoff going back to Fortes, who has a head of steam. Fortes, far sideline, and he will be knocked out of bounds. Another Tracy Door Company first down for three generations. The Tracy Door Company. Well, the offensive line is starting to have their way against uh, this HFL defense. And this is shades of what we saw early in the game when it looked like uh, Makai Fortes could do whatever he wanted. A 20-yard gain there for Fortes inside the red zone and setting up the uh, first down. First and 10 at the 22. And it's the design run to Buchholz. And we are back inside the Eyed family at dealerships red zone. Eyed. They love to earn your business. This would set up a very interesting scenario, though. Let's, I, I'm jumping ahead here, Danger. Batavia is able to tie this up. It's, it's almost like basketball. Who has the possession last? And that would be HFL. Almost like these two teams that were sparring for most of the second half, waiting for one to blink or flinch. Buchholz trying to get around that left side, and he finally will be spun down on the far side. How about that? That is number 55, Aaron Basic, wrestling him down. Yeah, with these two teams, heavyweights in Class B, sparring for most of the half. HFL landing the first body blow, and now Batavia looking to deliver on... Uh, Deliver a quick jab here as well in response. That was good for a Tracy Door Company first down for three generations. The Tracy Door Company first and goal from the 10. So four opportunities for them to punch it in. Design run. Trying to get to the outside is Buchholz. And Buchholz will get swallowed up once again. And once again, it's number 55. Face it. Well, this is the last chance you figure with the clock rolling on here. That was a loss on the play. Loss of three. Great pursuit by Fasic on that play. Finished with a strong tackle. Now, Grazio Plain has a touchdown at this end of the field. Second and goal. And brought down Fasic again. <laughs> able to get his hand on the jersey. Somebody might want to block him. He's been all over the place here the last few plays. And on this one, it looked like he got a little bit of jersey at the uh, the tail of the jersey there. And not enough to slow yeah. him down. Wow. Third and goal. Again at the 13. There was no game on last play. Now you see we're under a minute to go. Here's the play action. Buchholz under pressure. And Buchholz is going to get sacked. Or a run for a loss. First in. Captain Bancook, number one, to bring up fourth and goal. And Batavia has to call the timeout. This is their last chance. It's a fired up HFL defensive squad out in that field right now. Coach John Russ uh, telling his guys to breathe a little bit here. Know what you need to do. Mm. Know your assignments. The interesting thing we talked about it right at the top. The young linebackers for HFL. Yeah. And when you're playing a running quarterback with a lot of misdirection, read option, that sort of thing, they've been up to the task here certainly today. And that's the guy in the middle, 55 Fasic, that has been making plays tonight. Yeah, Aaron Fasic, the 5'11", 205-pound senior linebacker. This drive specifically, he's taken over defensively. Yeah. 
Well, this is going to get very loud here. It's going to come down to this. Student section, the freight train making noise. Last chance for Batavia. The defending champions of Class B. Four wide receivers. Cortez in the backfield. And now HFL, they'll use a timeout themselves. Wanted to get a look at how Batavia was going to line up with that four wide set. Well, Batavia having just the one timeout, I'll just point this out. This is the game if they don't get it. You can't stop. Right. Just cannot stop the clock. We quickly, we want to get to the fourth down play, but here are the scores here we've had here tonight. As this was starting off here with the Fortes run, 81 yards. Taking that to the house, and you're thinking right at that point, oh my gosh, this is going to be a long night here for the home team. Yeah, it's something that HFL, I think, has gotten accustomed to, giving up big plays on the first play of the game. No problem for Meacham, though. Finding his man, Andrew Wanson, at the back of the end zone. He's fired up, but now it's going to be Grazio Plain who runs a nice route, and that's a nice ball thrown by Bucholtz right over the shoulder. But then it's going to be Connor Finn coming up with a touchdown, and then the go-ahead touchdown by Grazio. Make that number six. Number 11, Wanson Reed. Now we got the fourth down play. It is fourth down and 11. The snap. Buchholz throws to the end zone. Up, batted around, and it is incomplete. Incomplete, and the HFL defense holds. HFL, all they have to do is snap the ball a couple of times. Buchholz had the time, but I'm not sure if he really had anybody open. A little off on the pass. Looking like they were maybe trying to draw some contact, but just sound defense by that HFL secondary to break that play up, break that pass up. And how impressive is that after starting the game the way they started with the 81 yard run on the first play from scrimmage for that HFL defense to gut up and hold Batavia to just seven points after that. The victory formation. And they'll have to do this one more time. What a big win for this program. Starting the season 0-2, but again, Waverly, that's just let's test ourselves. Well, you imagine that a game like that against Waverly or Monroe does better prepare you for a matchup against your rival in Batavia week three. Honeyoy Falls Lima in front of a very energized crowd getting the first W of the season. 21 to 14 is our final. Tonight's law office of William Attar, player of the game. You got to go with the guy with two touchdowns tonight. He was running Chris Roots, Andrew Wazenreed, just over the middle. And every time he touched it, it seemed like it was a big play tonight. Absolutely. And, and this is first action of the 2023 season. You can tell how important he is for his quarterback, Meacham. Wanson Reed with not one, but two touchdowns and those 71 yards receiving, making big plays all night for this Cougar offense. We will have Kevin Roche and our... Friday Night Rivals trophy presentation. That's coming your way next. It's the law offices of William Attar's Friday Night Rivals, presented by the Bob Johnson Automotive Group here on CW Rochester. HFL battling back, getting the win here tonight in week three, 21 to 14 for the trophy presentation. And standing by with head coach 
John Ross, here is Kevin Roche. All right, Gene, thanks so much. Here with the head coach of HFL, John Ross. Fourth and 11, your defense makes another big stand. They made a lot of big stands throughout this game. What does it say about that group, especially those young linebackers we talked about earlier this week? Yeah, we've been waiting for those guys to grow up a little bit, and this is a game where they needed to grow up. Um, all night long, we were kind of a bend-don't-break defense, especially after that opening play. Uh, couldn't be more proud of the guys. They put a lot of work in, especially going 0-2 to start the season. Um, a lot of work in, a lot of film study, a lot of getting, you know, practice time, so couldn't be more happy for those guys. Feel good to get this guy, Andrew Wanzenried, back with the offense after being out the first two games with injury is that what your offense can look like when he's hooking up with matt meacham yeah there's no doubt about it you know we've been waiting for him to come back i mean a quad injury you know soft tissue you never know how long it's going to take um not only is he a great wide receiver but he's our best defensive back he didn't play on defense tonight um but the guys in the back and that did did a great job containing them uh but yeah Happy to have him back. Yeah. Let's talk to him, Andrew. How did it feel to be back in the lineup here tonight and have two touchdowns against a big rival? It felt absolutely great. You know, I was excited to come out tonight. Obviously, it's my, my first game here with, here with the boys and excited to go out and compete. You know, they have a very good football team, so our defense did a great job holding them to 14 points is, is no no easy no easy task. And that was that was a full a full team effort on offense out there. O line, excellent job blocking, giving our quarterback Matt Meacham a ton of time, right? He did a great job out there. Our running backs keeping their backers in the Box, making sure they have to stop run first and the others rece receivers run run great routes and allow, you know allow everyone to get open so it's a really a full team effort there finally what's it do for the confidence of this team starting off 0-2 to get a win against the two-time defending sectional champs yeah it's big for sure I mean you know our, our first two games were tough obviously didn't didn't end the way we wanted to but we knew we played to our ability you know not so much focus on on the opponents just every game is is a new game and we came out here and we competed tonight well congratulations Andrew coach Russ Best of luck against Virtus next week. We want to present you with the William Matar Friday Night Rivals Champions Trophy. Congratulations. Gene. Oh, you love that, right? Celebrate. Wins are fun. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. The law office of William Matar presenting the trophy tonight. Mike Danger, your final thoughts here. Just really impressed with both teams. HFL, uh, you know, climbing back into this game and, and battling back with the diversity. I think HFL is a young team that grew up tonight against their rival. And for Batavia, look, they're a very talented team. And I think just a handful of mental errors and mistakes that were made through the course of the game might have cost them here. They're going to regroup. And, and I have a feeling you're going to hear a lot more of these teams as the Section 5 season continues. Coming up next Friday night, week four, we're back in Canandaigua, East and Canandaigua. Hope you can join us. Our coverage will begin at 7 o'clock. All of us would like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, including the law offices of William Attar, Bob Johnson Automotive Group, Triple O Heating, Cooling, Electrical and Plumbing, and Rochester Regional Health who, through their contributions, make these games possible for you at home. We'd also like to thank our great sponsor supporters for their contributions, including Lakeside Roofing, Tracy Door Company, The Vinyl Outlet, Bill Gray's, The Eyed Family at Dealerships, American Custom Exteriors and Interiors, and Triple A. And we also like to thank, certainly, the two schools tonight, Batavia, and everyone here for their hospitality at Honeyway Falls Lima High School. For the entire team here, on CW Rochester, led by Steve Sinusol, our director, Eric Carpe, sideline reporter Kevin Roche, for my partner Mike Danger. My name is Gene Battaglia. HFL winning here tonight on Friday Night Rivals. Have a good night, everyone.